How many knew that? Yay. Most of us don't know that there's a right way and a wrong way to get into a chair. Now, you may be the only one in the table who knows that, but boy, doesn't it feel good when you get in. Yes, ma'am. I didn't hear. The question is that most of us don't don't dine with silver service now, and we don't know left to right. I believe was, well, that was the, the reason right. Before. Well, yes and no. If if someone doesn't know how to enter into a chair then you need to be polite and not point that out and move your body. There are lots of waiters and servers today who don't know which side to serve and which side to remove from. There are a lot of adults who don't know that their, their um, bread and butter are on the, on the left and their drink is on the right, and now they're doing this. I'm watching grown business people sit down and do this because it's a D and it's a B, bread and butter and a drink. <laughs> Grown people. So we could get into a whole etiquette thing, but let's get back to body language. So how we sit and dine also has an effect. In business, we tend to be aware I don't know if you can see this, of our own nonverbal non signals of assertiveness. How can someone be more assertive during a meeting? By leaning in, as this woman did. Any other ways? Make eye contact. Eye contact is good with not only the speaker, but everyone around the table. Any other shows of nonverbal assertiveness? That's effective listening, which is very good. Any others? Shoulders back is another good one by sitting up straight and being confident. Yes, in certain conditions. She's saying elbows out and spread and take more space like a man. Men will tend to spread out more, and it shows that you have your defined area. I don't always agree with that because it's not always a comfortable stance because our trunks are not always as high as a man's, and to spread out, we may be doing one of these. So we want to do what's comfortable for us, the best assertiveness is to be a good listener. Remember, we don't have to provide solutions immediately. By earning that reputation of she's always listening. Because our natural reaction in business is, ooh, ooh I know the answer, I'm going to come and say it. You may not have heard the whole case yet. And we're offering a solution too early, and it's a short sell. So even though this is a little off of body language, I want all of you to think about an iceberg every time you're in a meeting. And this goes into sales training a little bit. But I call it iceberg thinking. The average of an iceberg above the surface is about 14%. We can usually see it. It might be foggy, it might be a little hazy from the rain, but generally we can see 14% relatively clearly. Those are apparent issues, apparent reasons, A, above the surface. What we want to be able to do is listen and ask open-ended questions to get below that surface to get to the compelling issues. And we do that by showing our assertiveness by listening 
and then by asking important, open-ended questions to learn more so that we're not short-sighted either by our body language or our verbal responses from short-selling it. So think, did I ask enough questions that I'm already down to their pain, to their compelling issues? Yes, ma'am. Sometimes, sometimes. The use of silence is underused, uh, was a question, and yes, sometimes it is. We don't always have to be talking. We can even say, when asked a question, given a query, we can say, you know what, that's something I really want to think about, whether it's for three minutes, three hours, three days, and give your response. Because now that leads us to, are we reactive or do we act upon? Reacting to something is like pulling someone out from under a bus or to, to avoid getting under a bus, to not get hit. Acting upon something is going from a stance of strength, knowledge, and power. Reacting to something is emotionally based. So your body and your words have to show in business for women that we've heard. We're not short selling. We're not coming up with a solution too early. Where do you keep your hands and arms during a meeting? On your face is not good. Women tend to do that. I don't know why. Maybe they're holding their, their jowls up. I don't know. Not good. Hands crossed on the table is OK. Preferably, they're on the arms of a chair, and you're in a relaxed mode. Preferably, not crossed, and you're not coming across as um, closed. But if it's your natural stance, then they're going to have to learn. But this is generally speaking. So think about when you're in a meeting or sitting in your boss's office. Where are your arms? Where are your feet? And by the way, crossed legs, number one, very unhealthy. If you were ever in a hospital, the first thing they're going to tell you is don't cross your legs cuts off your circulation. It also can be seen as provocative. You show more leg, you show thigh if you're in a skirt. It is better, <laughs> but you have to be careful, to either plant your feet firmly about three to four inches apart on the ground, unless you have a very short skirt on, then please keep your knees together. I don't know about you, but my son in seventh grade took a ballroom dance course at school against his wishes. And we walked in for the show night of watching all that they had learned. And there were about, the dads walked in and went way up in the bleachers and the moms were all chatting. And we noticed a girl sitting on the opposite side of the gym, all in their little white gloves and their beautiful dresses, all with their ankles crossed and every one of them with their knees over here. It's a natural stance. When you cross your ankles, your knees relax, and it was very cute and funny at that age. Not so cute and funny in work environments. So remember that. You want to be business appropriate with how we sit, how we stand. We don't stand like this. We don't. It can be viewed, perceived, observed in a way that may not be beneficial to us. When delivering information, I mean really, if I stood like this all tonight, who the hell does she think she is? So we want to be big, but we don't want to be pompous. 
What do you do with your legs? Every time you're seated, please think about where your legs are. We don't always. We get comfortable in certain situations. Please, let's think about it. And gesture with your arms and hands. This is preening. Unless, like me tonight, your hairspray wore out. I mean, you know, it happens. We don't want to be seen as preening. I sat at a meeting one time with a gentleman who took his cross pen and he was picking his nails the whole time with the tip. Not a very receptive gesture. Not good for everyone around him and not modeling very well for his subordinates. Now that you know about signals, watch the next time you're in a meeting. Watch teenagers together. Watch your peers. Go to the lunchroom. It's a whole lot of fun. It really is. Airports are the best. There was a movie, He's Just Not That Into You, I believe was the name of it. They predicted because a bartender spent enough time at a bar that he could predict what was going to happen. Not magic, it's a series of, of body language signals. And you too, if you were tending bar every single night and you saw the same behavior patterns repeated, you would understand. We just don't always pay attention. We had, when I was studying to be a behaviorist, we had to go to large city airports, watch people, make up a story, and then walk over to them and say, I'm sorry, but I observed you, and this was the day before terrorists, so they didn't think you were horrible. <laughs> I've observed you, and this is who I think you are. And we got graded on it. As I look back, it seems funny. Then, not so funny, let me tell you. But we learned how to observe people. We had to go to grocery stores and look at checkout people. Look at people checking out. And then go talk to them. Just what someone wants when they're pushing two kids in a cart full of groceries is some young kid coming over and saying, is this the story of your life because we just observed you? But we were running from the beginning of the, the course, and it was a three-year very intense course to the end of it. We went from about 7% accuracy to better than 80% accuracy just from learning. And it's a whole lot of fun. So you can try it with people. Be careful in airports. <laughs> How do you greet someone? How many handshakes are there? How are we doing on time? We're okay? How many handshakes are there? Three. Three. Most popular is we want to get web to web. Good handshake. But even as women, and it's not your fault because I walked over to you, as women, we've lost the right a long time ago. We stand up when we shake someone's hand. I don't care who it is. Unless you're Kate, Catherine now, or Queen Elizabeth, we don't proffer our fingers. And business women do that. We go web to web and we stand up with a firm, parallel handshake. 